With every new Samsung flagship device comes new tweaks to the software, and each time we find features we can't live without, plus some lesser obvious tips that are just nice to have. And the same is true of the Galaxy S22 series. I'm Cam Bunton from Pocket Lint, and in this video I'm going to show you some of the features that I found really useful. If you do like this video, please do leave a thumbs up, tap subscribe and the notification bell, and that way you don't miss any more of our videos. So first up is bringing back the power button. Over the past couple of years, we've seen a number of different Android manufacturers ditch the easy one button long press to switch off your phone. Instead, they've made it more complicated, and Samsung is one of them. However, you can bring it back. Just open settings, find advanced features, and then side key. Now under press and hold, select power off menu. Now when you long press the side button, instead of launching Samsung's terrible Bigsby assistant, it'll open up the power menu instead, allowing you to quickly switch the phone off. Number two is double clicking to pay. On a similar note to the above, you can have the side button open any app you want by double pressing it. For me, I found it really handy to have quick access to my contactless payment, so Go back to settings and advanced features and side key. Now under double press, either select Samsung Pay if you've set it up or select open app and choose Google Pay from the list of available apps. It's worth noting here that of course you do need to download Google Pay first in order to use it. Number three is theming your phone with your wallpaper colors. With Android 12, Google enabled the ability to use accent colors in your phone that match your wallpaper. To enable it, open settings and find wallpaper and style. You'll find an option that says color palette. Tap on it and choose the color scheme that you want from the available auto-generated options. Now you'll find the accents in your settings, your drop-down shade and dialer app match, as well as pretty much any Google app. So if you have Gboard or Gmail installed, it'll theme those as well. Number four is customizing or removing your edge panels. By default with the S22, there's an edge panel. It's essentially a way to get quick access to your most used apps, frequent contacts, or other useful tools. You should see a semi-transparent tab at the side of your screen. So if you swipe this across to bring up your edge panel. Now tap the little settings cog at the bottom. Here you can choose which panels you want to activate, so you can switch on the weather, compass, tasks, reminders and people if you want to. And in the apps tab you can also hit edit to choose which apps appear in that list. If like me you hate edge panels because you only ever activate it accidentally, you can disable it completely. Just go to settings, display, now find edge panels and toggle it off. Next up is adding an app drawer button. By default if you've enabled the app drawer view you get to it by swiping on the screen. However, if you want an icon to tap instead, you can do. Just long press anywhere on your home screen wallpaper and tap settings. Now toggle on the option that says show app screen button on home screen. Now it places a button to press on the screen, but be warned, it will replace the fifth icon in your app dock at the bottom of the screen if you enable it. Number six is gesture navigation. Now for whatever reason, Samsung likes to stick to the old style navigation buttons on its phones, but you can enable the newer navigation gestures instead. Just go to settings, display and navigation bar. Now select the swipe gestures option. Now swiping up from the bottom will take you home, swiping in from the sides will take you back and swiping up and holding launches the recent apps view. Next up is making your always on screen always on. The always on display is one of those classic Samsung features and most Android makers have it now, which shows you a clock on a dark screen. But these days to conserve battery, it's not actually always on unless you enable it to be. Go to settings and lock screen and now tap always on display and make sure show always is selected. You can also choose to have it scheduled to be on during specific times. And if you toggle on music information, it'll show whatever music you have playing on there as well. Now one last quick tip for always on since we're here is tap screen orientation at the bottom and select landscape and now you have the always on display screen in horizontal mode which is great at bedtime on your bedside table. Now next up is an important one into seeing which apps have accessed which parts of your information and hardware or in other words your permissions. So privacy and permissions have been revamped this year making it easier to see which apps have been accessing your information and location. So if you want to see how many times your location or camera or contacts or mic have been accessed, you can find that information. Just go to settings and privacy. At the top, you'll see an easy graphic that shows you how many apps have accessed the camera, the microphone and location. If you tap on them, you can see which apps have accessed them and see a log of all the instances that they've been accessed. This will inform you of any apps are accessing them that shouldn't be. 
Tap all permissions to see a breakdown of all of them, like SMS, microphone, files, and other features. This way you just get better control over which apps are accessing which bits of information on your phone. It makes it a bit more transparent, which is a good thing. Number nine is silencing your notifications while driving. So smartphones are smart, the clue's in the name. That means they're clever enough to know when you're moving in a vehicle. And you can enable a feature that mutes notifications whenever you're driving. Just go to settings, safety and emergency, and then choose silence notifications while driving and toggle it on on the next screen. It will then mute any distracting pinging whenever it detects that you're moving in a car. Number 10 has been a bit of a favorite of mine for the last couple of years and it's reverse wireless charging. You can charge other wireless charging compatible devices on the back of your S22. To enable quick access, you first need to add the quick toggle to your quick setting shade. So drop down that shade from the top of the screen and then swipe across to the second tab. You'll see a plus icon. Tap this and then find the wireless power share icon. It looks like a battery with an arrow pointing right. Drag and drop it into the shade. Now when you hit done, it'll save it there. To activate it now, just find the icon, tap it, and you'll enable the reverse wireless charging for charging your buds or your smartwatch. Turn the phone over and place the other device on its back. Number 11 is another favorite and it's lift to wake. One very useful software feature is to have the screen wake up whenever you pick it up. It's not enabled by default, but it's easy enough to activate. Just go to settings, advanced features, motion and gestures, and toggle on the option that says lift to wake. Now, whenever you pick your phone up from a surface, the screen will light up. On to a couple of camera tips now, and the first one is director's view. When you open up the camera app and hit the more tab, you'll see an option that says director's view. Select this and you'll get the option to shoot with the front and back cameras at the same time, as well as giving you live previews from all three of the cameras on the back. That allows you to quickly switch between ultra wide, primary and zoom by tapping on those views. In its default setting, it records your front facing camera as a picture in picture window in the corner. But if you tap the down arrow in the toolbar, you can have it save as a separate video while simultaneously recording from the rear cameras. Next is adding more camera modes for quick access. Again, in the camera app, when you hit the more tab, you'll see a little plus icon. When you tap this, you can drag and drop dedicated shooting modes into the quick access options within the camera UI. So if you frequently use the panorama mode or pro photo or video modes, you can quickly and easily get to them without having to open up the more tab first every time. To remove options, just drag and drop them back into the grid. 14 is enabling shot suggestions. If you're not too confident taking photos, there's a really useful feature called shot suggestions, which helps you line up your frame. It's not enabled by default, but it's easy enough to switch on. Just open the camera app, tap the settings cog in the corner, and now toggle on the option that says shot suggestions. Now, when you go to shoot a photo, you'll get a simple guide on screen helping you to line it up. Number 15 is recording HDR 10 plus videos. Here's one feature that's hidden away a bit, but you might want to take advantage of it if you often watch your videos back on an HDR 10 plus compatible display. You can actually record video in HDR 10 plus. Open the camera app, then go to settings in the corner. Now find advanced recording options and toggle on HDR 10 plus videos in the list. Last but not least is taking a selfie by raising your hand. Now on the camera front, Samsung phones have this really cool and useful feature that lets you take a selfie just by raising your hand. Show the camera your palm, wait for the timer to count down, and then it'll shoot your selfie. It's simple. If it's not enabled, you can switch it on in the settings. Just open up the camera settings again, select shooting methods, and toggle on show palm if it isn't already. So there you go, just a few of my favorite tips and tricks for you to try on your Samsung Galaxy S22. 22 plus or s22 ultra if you did like this video and found it useful please do leave a thumbs up subscribe and tap the notification bell and that way you won't miss any more of our videos i'll see you again in the next one bye for now mm -hmm.